Hello everyone, I'm RecV5. And I am Sandman99. And welcome back to Fallout 4 G9-13 playthrough. Yes, and as you can see, we are back in the Commonwealth at Abernathy Farm. Mm -hmm. and don't you think the, the round sunglasses look cool with the top hat? They do, they yeah. look great. Yeah, so we're going to wear the round, round sunglasses for a while. But anyway, I um, after the last episode when we restored the power to Nuka World, I... Uh, went around and I just very briefly visited the one lone settlement there to activate the workbench. Yep. And then I came back to the Commonwealth to try and establish some uh, supply, uh, lines. supply lines to that uh, particular one. And I got one going from uh, one of these settlements now. I don't remember which one. Either Sunshine Tidings or, or uh, Red Rocket Fort Hagen, which I just started to populate. And I figured I'd come back here to uh, Abernathy Farm and uh, ruin their happiness by, uh, you know, like putting a recruitment beacon out. I haven't actually done a lot with Abernathy Farm. This just has the same original family. I built this little catwalk up here so I could get up on the roof to put gun turrets up here. Yo, you ended up doing a lot more development uh, to the northeast part of the map because that's where uh, Far Harbor is. Yeah. And uh, I, of course, built a fence around the perimeter of this location. And, uh, you know, like I put gun turrets up around the outside of this. And, of course, I scrapped everything and cleaned everything all up. And I threw in a uh, actual fridge that works here. And the washer and dryer and a little bench with some towels. And, uh, of course, I put in the chem station and the weapon workbench and the armor workbench in here, and I fixed up the bathroom a little bit, put new fixtures in. Yep. But other than that, I really haven't done a whole lot with this place. We've got a couple of extra beds here. But what I thought I would do is I thought I would... See, and how I've been just putting up piece, like bits of scaffolding with, to put gun turrets on top of. Yep. I thought what I would do since this is a really big area where uh, there's a lot of unused space, is I thought that I would build a large building down in this end of the uh, property. Oh, okay. Because there's way more farm space here than what we'll ever be able to use. And I figured that if we put, you know, like a nice... We'll put in a, a bit of a... Nice foundation. Foundation here, and... Uh, they come with floors, too. Yep. All right. And... Uh, maybe I should... I was going to make you this a You could move them bit. onto the other side. No, I can make it a little wider this way. Yeah, that's what I was saying. Yeah. Because I was actually going to make it a little wider. And then we'll move this one out. Put our uh, stairs in here. Oh, but now all your, your foundations don't have the planks facing the right way. Well, they never did anyway. Ugh. Oh. I don't care about that. Ugh. Oh. I just don't care. It's terrible. So we'll put a door here. Here somewhere. Maybe right here would be a good place to put the doorway. Yeah, why not? And, of course, with the uh, new wooden wall pieces that I got from a mod. Oh yeah, that mod. Yeah. Well, I've got a whole different selection of different kinds of shack walls that I can build with now, including ones that are solid planks. Nice. Right? And there's also half-size pieces. You can do all kinds of cool things, like you can build your own custom stairwells and that kind of thing if yep. you want. Or you can have these ones, which look like, uh, you know, pieces of plywood fastened together somehow. This is just the standard one, right? It looks like I can build the most of these because of the mixture of wood and steel, right? But also... It's not like you're going to run out anyways. Yeah, but also I can put in, uh, uh, you know, like a few of these. I like to use these for windows, uh. right? The ground floor is just breezy. Yeah. 
Here I thought you were going to make the place look classy. Well, what do you mean? <laughs> With those nice solid walls that you had going on there? Yeah, I know, but you need some windows just to let some light in and cheer the place up a little, you know? You don't need windows. Just ask any concrete bunker. Yeah, well, this isn't a concrete bunker. Hey, if you have no windows, then the sun can't shine through your window and wake your ass up. True. Okay, now we need some upper floors. See, that mod added quite a few different uh, floor pieces too, right? Yep. Like, you've even got, like, quarter-sized, uh, you know, combination roof floor pieces. Yep. And half-sized ones as well. Nice. But I think we're probably just going to build this as a, uh, a two-story building because this is a pretty good-sized building. See, I could build on top of the Abernathy's house over there, but it's kind of cramped up there. And because the uh, uh, power line tower thingy kind of tends to narrow as it goes up, it uh, makes it difficult to uh, make things up there too, right? Yep. Anyway. Yeah. God damn, man. You have a window everywhere. What is this? It's a window place. Ah. Oh. So much light. Yeah. Turn this around. Get down there. Yeah. Because we're going to do this interesting concept where, uh, see, the biggest thing that I really like about this uh, wooden wall mod is before you only had just this one doorway piece, right? Yep. But now you've got a whole bunch of different doorway pieces. Right? Yep. And they're also not th as thick and bulky and stuff as the uh, other ones. They they snap easily in to where places where the uh, um, regular one just wouldn't go, right? I see, I see. So... how this looks here. Okay, that's pretty good. Uh, we could build this one more out. One more wall space out. There. Classy enough for you? Yeah, that's better. About 1% <laughs> better. <laughs> yeah, okay. And then we can stick a wall piece in here, and then we'll put a doorway piece in on this side. And, uh, yeah. Didn't quite think this one through. Didn't quite. Hear it, shit. Uh oh, shit! Hmm? We got trouble! Uh oh. Mm. See, these guys, they spawn even within the limits of uh, a. Uh... Look at all that blood. Uh, settlement, too, right? Yep. Anyway, you might notice that I've got a brand new shotgun. I do. It is the uh, Riot shotgun, just like from uh, Fallout New Vegas. <laughs> nice. Yeah. So we'll have a quick look at this. This is one I found in a randomly encountered uh, uh, inventory from a, a, a gunner that I killed, right? Yep. But it looks just like the Riot Shotgun from Fallout New Vegas, except that it has a few more uh, uh, fittings and things that you can put on it. 
and it does largely um, uh, occupy about the same niche as the regular combat shotgun does, mm -hmm. except that it's you can put a lot more different fittings and things on it, right? Like um, I've got what is called a duckbill choke on the end of the barrel here. Yep. And I've got an underbarrel laser. And what that laser does is it doesn't actually physically help you with targeting, but it makes this gun behave as if you had a... Um, um, dun, 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 what is that? Those scopes that make the diamond over top of the oh, target? Oh, yeah, recon scope. Yeah, a recon scope. It makes it re behave like a recon scope, even though it still just has the regular sights. Although this one had glow sights on it when I found it. Nice. So I didn't bother to change that. But uh, yeah, see, so you can you can aim down the iron sights, and if you aim at a valid target, it'll put a red diamond over it, just like if as if you were looking through a recon scope. That's what the laser does. You could also put an underbarrel flashlight on this thing, which I imagine would probably cast a, a like a beam of white light yep. in front of you or something like that. And there's a lot of other different ammunition options and things too. Maybe I'll show that off here at the weapon bench while we're talking about it anyway. Sure. <laughs> so we'll turn on a light here. So, so anyway, um, I'm just hanging on to that. Okay, uh, da -da 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 -da. ported advanced. Okay, so I put an advanced receiver on this, which is the most powerful receiver. Because which is available at rank three gun nut, just like the combat shotgun, right? Yep. And of course, there's also lots of different options for barrels, right? You can have the standard short barrel, which is the basic barrel this thing comes with. This one had a short ported barrel on it. Oh, okay. So I just left it alone because I kind of like the short barrel. I like the look of it. And this is basically a close quarters weapon, anyways, right? Yep. And it has the short stock, but you've got a lot of different stock options as well, including your recoil uh, comp compensating stock, a scavenger stock, which uh, it's apparently gives you a better carry weight. Not sure how that works. Gunslinger stock. See, it has little, like, gels racked on the side. Yep. Light folding stock. Know, all kinds of stuff. I just went and stayed with the basic short stock. And I did upsize the, the drum magazine. The standard drum holds 12 rounds, just like in Fallout New Vegas. And the large drum holds 24 rounds. Nice. I see it's a quick eject drum, too. Yeah, I put a quick eject drum on there, too. And, uh, of course, there's all sorts of different sights you can put on it. You can put hollow sights or reflex sights. Uh scopes if you want to a short scope a medium scope or a thermal scope which but I'm you assuming. chose to go with the real man sights. well it already had these sights on it and i kind of like you know the look of the original um uh, shotgun with a scope on top yeah I, I like the look of the original uh riot shotgun which in fallout new vegas doesn't have a scope i don't think i don't think there's even an option to put a scope on it I just like the way it looks. And then, of course, there's the muzzle attachments. So you can go with compensators, muzzle brake. You could put a suppressor on it if you wanted. But I went with the duckbill choke, which gives you better range and a tighter spread. And then, of course, there's all sorts of different ammunition. Because in Fallout New Vegas, of course, there's all sorts of different varieties of 12-gauge ammunition. Yep. And in order to simulate that here, the mod maker basically... You know, like, lets you change the kind of ammunition that you can fire with the gun at the workbench, right? So you got the standard buckshot, uh, flechettes that cause bleeding, mm -hmm. uh, dragon breath, magnum buckshot shells, which would be, I guess, the equivalent of the, uh, 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 oh, what, what is the it? The 4-aught buck? The 4-aught buck, yeah. Yep. Right? Explosive shells or uh, slugs. Pulse slugs, which do electrical damage. Rifled slugs. Oh, I just heard the toilet flush. Somebody was using the bathroom there. <laughs> in, in Abernathy's in the Abernathy house. Farm. Yeah. yeah. 
And uh, I put, I basically changed this one to fire plasma sh slugs. Okay. So it does a good hefty amount of ballistic damage and gives me a nice uh, extra bit of damage for that too. And there's all sorts of different accessories like a flashlight, right? Um, or uh, this one here apparently that uh, improves reload speed. Yep. Or uh, a targeting laser, which is what I put on it. Or VATS targeting, which I guess include, improves your VATS targeting percentage. So it has, it, like I said, it's similar in power to the uh, standard combat shotgun. But it has a lot more modability and a lot more different, uh, different features. It would right? seem so, yeah. Yeah, it's actually a very cool gun. And of course, you know, it has unique... Uh, let's see if I fire a shot here. So that's the reload, and it does. It also has a third-person reload animation too. Okay. Yep. And if you, uh, you know, like draw it, holster it, and then if you go into first person and draw it, see? Nice. So yeah, very nice. Custom animations. It seems to work well in the leveled lists, like on a side playthrough that I'm doing. I actually found one that has a legendary uh, effect on it as well, which is nice. So, uh, all in all, it's a good deal. Good yeah, mod. I like it. Yeah, I like it a lot, actually. It's, uh, you know, basically a highly customizable weapon. I'm going to do a little bit of cooking here. Mmm, butt chops. Yeah. Tasty. Well, gotta eat, right? Yep. Yeah, how much iguana stick do you have left? Oh, I've still got quite a bit, I think. Oh, uh, fuck. Let's see here. I've got 31. You've increased the amount. How yeah. did you manage that? Well, because every time I find some iguana bits, I cook them. God damn. Anyway, I think I'm going to uh, maybe sleep for the night here because it's getting to be nighttime. I'd been hoping for a while you were going to finally run out and then you'd have something else in your inventory. Okay, so it is now December 11th, right? Yep. So we're going to find out how long I can go without sleep. Because it's December 11th. Because I... It, maybe it's just a subjective thing, but it, like I didn't even feel tired there when I went to go to sleep, right? I just did it because I didn't want to be harassed by vampires all night while I'm trying to build this building. Yep. Anyway, we need to switch a couple of things around here. Because I didn't quite th think that through. There, that's better. Ooh. And then... See, I like those wall pieces. Yeah, they look very stylish, don't they? Yeah. Nice looking stuff. All right. So I'm not sure how many beds we need to make here. Oh yeah, I forgot about that too. I need to put a four piece in there now. Oh, I've got that sitting on top of a four piece. That's what happened there. Yeah. Because I'm thinking that maybe this can be my... Uh, you know, like shops and bar and all that kind of stuff eventually. Oh, okay, and then you'll jam all the beds up into the top area here. Well, I can, oops, I can put a few in here, but probably not like 40-ish, right? So I figured I'd make another floor up here, but it can, doesn't have to be quite as big, right? Guy walks downstairs, goes to the bar, walks back upstairs, goes to sleep. Yep. Okay, and then we'll put some upper floor-ish things here. 
figuring you're going to expand this one more. Well, I like to have roof access anyways. Just because, uh, you know, the roof is a good place to put power generators and that kind of stuff. Yeah. They don't get destroyed quite so easily by attackers and that kind of thing. They're way up off the ground. And also, where is that wall piece again, though? There it is. And also... <clears throat> see, we can do stuff like this now, too, because we've got... Uh, those quarter size pieces. Yep. Right? So I put a quarter size piece there. And then I can uh, put a ladder piece there. Nice. And then just to make it look really nice, I can put a wall piece there and a wall piece there. And that's a custom staircase. And that's a custom staircase. Right? Yeah, and then you could put a John underneath there. Uh, I just fell off the edge. Well, actually, what I was thinking about doing was uh, putting a computer in there. Yeah, that would work. Right? Because we can do something like this, too. Go with our power. We'll go conduits. And because I have place everywhere, I can... Uh, I Just ram it through. I, yeah, I don't have to use one of those big, silly, clunky... Uh, uh, wall pass through pieces like uh, you know in in this thing right yep I don't know why they didn't just let you do this anyway because drills don't exist in the future because it's not like yeah well you know what my my father is an electrician and when I was young like a kid I used to go out and help him once in a while and you know what we used to drill holes through walls and ceilings and roofs we even had I even used a hole saw to cut a hole through a uh, board roof on a log cabin one time so that uh, and it was the right size to put the, the uh, boxes in that you would attach the uh, light fixtures to mm -hmm. you know like for the wiring for the light fixtures and everything <clears throat> I helped them wire a log cabin once that was an interesting experience because yep. all the logs had to be pre-drilled in order to run the wiring through them right yeah <laughs> Unless you wanted all the wiring to be, like, ugly and strapped to the inside of the walls and all that kind of stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And the roof was actually made out of planks. And then, uh, like, that sheet insulation yep. was laid on top of it. So a lot of the wiring was strapped to the upper side of the planks, plank roof. Mm -hmm. And then the insulation was put down on top of that, right? And then whatever the, I don't know, they weren't finished building it by the time we were done whatever they put as a finished roof surface on it, right? Yep, yep. Anyway, uh, I was kind of digressing because I was a little bit distracted there, but now we can put our... Uh... You were reminiscing. I was reminiscing, yeah. That's what happens. That's what happens when you get old. You reminisce, right? There. Anyway, now, up here, we can put our wonderful... Generator, and even though I am capable of building a fusion generator, I'm still pretty fond of windmills. You and your windmills. Yep. Well, what can I say? They're, their windmills are cool. See, what you could do is build a windmill and then, like, jam a fusion generator under it. <laughs> and the fusion generator runs the windmill. Yeah. Right. Okay. So we'll put a. We'll put a thing of a jig here. Then instead of calling it a windmill, you could call it a bird chopper. Yeah. Gather around underneath the bird chopper. We'll get free dinner every night. Yeah, that's something I never realized, but a lot of the uh, talk that goes on these days about green energy and all that kind of stuff, it turns out that wind farms are not nearly as green as what a lot of people think because uh, they kill birds and stuff like that too, right? You know, like birds run into them and get killed and... I mean, I guess I'm not really like a a, a, a a bird protectionist. I don't really care about that. But for me, I just think that there are better alternatives, right? Like, I think nuclear power is a better alternative. Well, if you, like, I think we've talked about this before, but if you live in a cold climate, 
you're never going to get the wind you're, power. You're, yeah, the wind power isn't going to be a very good or practical solution anyway. Because it'll freeze, and actually that's kind of uh, something that happened uh, uh, to us up here. Yeah, yeah, we actually got warnings for the first time in my entire lifetime. And, and you're like 60-whatever. And I'm 60-some years old, and you know what? This is the very first time in my entire lifetime that we are ever warned to use less power because the grid may not be able to support it. And it's like, what kind of bullshit is that? Yep. Right? I mean, we only have 4 million people in this province. We should have enough goddamn power. And I don't think our power needs have changed a great deal. I think our ability to produce it has changed. Yeah, because we've right? cut back on uh, the traditional staples of our province of like oil that's, and gas that's and right. coal. That's right. And you know what? Uh, green power is all well and good, but you know, before you start shutting down the old stuff, make sure that you have sufficient replacement source of power in place, right? Well, especially because a lot of people have electric furnaces these days, too, so I'd say green power is all well and good, but freezing to death in the winter is not. Well, like I said, you could, it, it's just common sense. You have to make sure that you have a reliable... Um, replacement for this stuff before you start mothballing it, right? Yeah, and we we and, totally didn't do that. And well, yeah, and that's what the problem is. And whoever made that decision should be shot with a ball of their own shit. <laughs> because nobody asked me what I thought, and I personally am against uh, uh, rolling blackouts and that kind of thing. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Know, we're not living in the goddamn third world here. We're in, we're supposed to be a first world nation. And one of the best in the world. And one of the best places to live in the world. You know, power outages is a hor well, that's horseshit. That should never happen. And that's why, you know, if they really wanted to shut down coal-fired power plants and all that kind of stuff, they should have maybe built a couple of nuclear reactors and got them online first. Yep. Well, you know, that's exactly what France ended up doing. Yeah. And well, now they provide everybody's power. Well, back in eastern Canada, apparently, they have lots of, uh, uh, you know, like, nuclear power plants, too. But no, so. instead we decided to do the dumb wind thing. Well, they do it backwards, too, though, right? Like, it's stupid. You know, like, don't... Don't disable and get rid of the existing infrastructure until you've got something that replaces it. Yeah. Right? I mean, that just is common sense. Well, it would give you time. If you were to do it at a slow enough pace, you'd actually have time to test it and refine it and see what works and what doesn't, and you wouldn't just be kind of like jumping ship as you go, right? This is kind of a problem, too, in software, actually, with uh, the concept of rolling releases. Like, uh, uh, sometimes that kind of thing can end up with uh, crashing your operating system or things like that. I'm sure everybody's had a blue screen before from a Windows update, and some people have had their Windows machines get bricked and things like that, and maybe it's happened to your Android phone or something else like that, too. Yeah. All right. Updates in general are not always a good thing. They don't always go smoothly, so don't fix what ain't broken until you've got something to actually replace it with. Anyway, I guess everybody knows where I stand on uh, green power now. Oh, we could always go back to burning wood. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that's even worse, though. Yeah, right? well, you know what? It's worse than coal, but you know what? It's green. You make money out of it. <laughs> it's a renewable resource. There yeah, you go. It's a renewable can, resource. That's so long, that's what we'll say. So long as you're not actually burning all the trees bef quicker than you can make more of them, right? <laughs> well, that's why you got to get uh, uh, tree farms. Well, yeah. every place, everywhere needs a multi-story tree farm now. We're switching over to wood, guys. Actually, you know what we need to do is uh, invest in and uh, take all the environmentalists out and line them up in front of. <laughs> <laughs> disavow. I think I have to disavow that because this is going up on YouTube. Oh, okay. Well. <laughs> we can't say that. We can't? No, we can't say that. Oh. Okay. <laughs>
Sorry, YouTube. I didn't, I didn't mean it. Well, I guess we'll see how that goes. Yeah. But no, I mean, I think that uh, it's, it's all well and good to move toward uh, more environmentally friendly alternatives to various things that we're doing, but a little bit of common sense should be exercised in that process. Yeah. Right. Well, that's the thing too, right? It's like uh, there's too much fear mongering and not enough focus on what the science actually says. All right. And I think that's where a lot of these problems come from, and that's also where a lot of people jump the gun on this stuff. Yeah, and the fact is that uh, in North America we produce less than 10% of the entire world's pollution. And uh, so I think that probably uh, us panicking about how bad we're being for the environment is a little bit jumping the gun too. Well, there's also going to be some other issues too, because... In a northern climate, even if we were to get all of our emissions down, in a northern climate, like what we live in, you're always going to produce more emissions than you will in a southern climate because you have to heat the house in the winter. Yeah. If you don't, you freeze to death. Yeah, but I mean, all you need to do is look at a map of the world's pollution and where is 90% of it, right? Yeah, well, I ended up uh, getting some of those uh, maps. Uh, they were like live digital update maps from... Uh, when I was taking Earth and Environmental Sciences when I was still at the university a few years ago. Yeah. Yeah, and you showed me one of those. Yeah, and it was basically uh, China, India, Northern Africa, yeah. a little bit of Brazil. And you know what? Those people are not going to stop burning coal and all the other terrible things that they're doing for the environment. Because they have to bring their people out of poverty. Well, exactly, because suddenly their people are all going to starve to death if they start to do that, right? Yep. <laughs> You know, like, it's it's one of those things, though, where before we start worrying about it with the tiny amount that we produce, maybe uh, we need to uh, get the rest of the world online with it first. Because the biggest polluters are the ones that should be, you know, building the nuclear power plants and that kind of stuff, right? Yep. If they had the money to do it. Well, and ironically enough, uh... uh... I think uh, Canada did uh, do a little bit of contracting with China to build them a nuclear power plant, but obviously they're going to need more than just a nuclear power plant. Yeah, probably. They might have done more since then, I don't know. Well, but it's it's one of those things like... Because you have to realize that uh, we, we, we can't come at it from the wrong perspective either. They have like 1.3 billion people living in that country, and we have like 40 million. Yeah. Building a couple of nuclear power plants ain't going to solve the problem. They need to build, like, mass infrastructure, mass-produced nuclear power plants. Well, it looks like our new settler self-assigned himself to guarding somewhere. Well, he must be talented at it. Yeah. Because we now have a fourth settler here, but I don't remember building any guard posts. Where the hell is he? Oh, okay, no, he self-assigned to farming because I had already assigned uh, Blake Abernathy there to guarding. Oh, look, look, turn around and look. Yeah, I know. Peak Bethesda. Yeah. It just works. Yeah, Connie Abernathy has having a little trouble finding the door. <laughs> yeah, there's the new guy, and we don't need three farmers here, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn him into a provisioner. Here, folks work for what they got. After I have a drink of water. Ah, uh, okay, um, we need to go here. We need to make a nice uniform for our provisioner. Damn raiders. There's nothing they won't try to take from you. Just wanted to trade a few things. Sure. Okay. Now, what do, we, what do we have we can give this guy? We can give him an automatic assault rifle. And a police uniform. And then, 
you're not a farmer anymore. You're going to be a provisioner. You're going to go to Nuka World Red Rocket. Nice. Okay, so now <clears throat> I have... It doesn't show them leaving off the map here like it does for Far Harbor. I don't know why. Which is weird. Yeah, it's weird, but see? You got lines going off toward Far Harbor. Yep. But uh, I know he's there. So... Uh, Anyway, now we need to head back to Sunshine Tidings Co-op. And get and, another one. Yeah, I'll have to come back and do some babysitting at this settlement for a little while, probably, because uh, it's going to continue to collect people. You right? could always flip the recruitment beacon off for now. Nah, we'll leave it on. So anyway, I built this building so that I could have all these gun turrets and stuff pointing down at this gate, kind of. Yep. And uh, so we'll head on over to Sunshine Tidings now and see if we have an extra guy over there that we can turn into a provisioner. <clears throat> so we're just taking a little break from the exploring of Nuka World today so that we can, uh, you know, like connect up that settlement and then maybe do a little bit of settlement development in, in uh, Nuka World. And maybe after this episode, we'll have to look on the um, uh, Nexus and see if we can find a couple of decent settlement mods for Nuka World or something, right? Sure. Because I think that one settlement for that area is just not enough. There, you, I think that th three would probably hey be there, good I'm so thirsty. if they were put in the right places, right? Water. Yeah. Well, sure. it's just too... Uh, Sparsely Thank populated you. otherwise. Thank yeah. You. Okay, well, we give that settler some water. Maybe that settler will show up at one of my settlements at some point. At least that's my theory. Nope, they just sit there and thank you for giving them water for ever and ever and ever and ever and ever. Yeah. So anyway, off camera, I did do some development here at uh, Sunshine Tidings Co-op as well. Nice. So I built fencing. I used the existing buildings as part of the, the barrier. Mm -hmm. You know, so that it would conserve on the on the uh, fencing materials, right? And of course, uh, you know, like I got lots of room in these little various individual buildings to put beds and that kind of thing in. Yep. And when I was last here, there was only two settlers here, so we seem to have gained another settler. And even this one, this broken down one here that used to have that chunk of plywood in this doorway, well, that chunk of plywood is scrappable with scrap everything. Nice. And then I just built a wall and put a, you know, like a ceiling on the inside in here. So now this is a usable building for uh, settlers to sleep in too, right? You did a good <laughs> job repairing that. Yeah. And then, of course, we have the main workshop building. Right, and I left this bench with that computer on it. Yep. Oh, I never did open that up. Hmm. Oh, really? No. I guess I uh, never paid any attention That's to it. Because then we can do we could do stuff with that Mister Handy robot if we wanted to. You've got to help. They've kidnapped my friend. Uh oh. Uh. Ooh. Who kidnapped her? They said they'd be back for the ransom in a few days. If I don't pay up, they'll kill it. Damn it, now I'm going to get sidetracked into another Rescue the Settler thing. Well, at least there will be some shoe sting in this uh, episode. Thank you. Thank you. I didn't know what I was going to do. Okay, well, that's Just not too far away anyway. Safe, Federal baby. ration stockpile. Okay. Well, I guess we have to go and do that now before we can uh, continue on. And of course, I've only got one gate in this settlement. This settlement, uh, although however, has more farming area than I'll ever be able to use. Because yep. I could feasibly plant, plant crops everywhere here. And, uh, you know, like I think the most settlers I've ever had at a settlement is like 35 or something. Yep. So there's way more uh, stuff here than... Uh... You could uh, just about uh, put up concrete walls around your crops. Yeah. <laughs> You'd actually have the room for that. So anyway, we're going to head over here to Federal Ration Stockpile, I guess, and shoot a bunch of raiders and uh, rescue a hapless settler. I 
if I can find any Apples or any Raiders around here to shoot. This place doesn't look like very lively. I have a feeling I've been here before. Huh? Oh, okay. oh, there's at least one person around. Grab that. That yeah, sounded like I've it might have been behind you. That, that uh, duffel bag is empty, so I've been here before. I've cleared, it's on your left. I've cleared this place out before. The settler, or that raider, is probably inside one of these buildings, or maybe even in the main bunker. There's a gun turret there. Huh. You missed both times. I can't, yeah, I couldn't hit it. There. What did you have? Okay. Oh, you get to unlock the terminal again if you haven't done that already. I'm in. Turret control. Deactivate. I already destroyed one, but I think there's two turrets here. Okay. About your defense system. You're going nowhere. Okay. Who's there? Oops, I missed. There. Oh, you want to do something fun? Sure. Watch this. <laughs> uh, let's see here. Um, what have you got in mind? <laughs> Except that I missed the window, right? I think you still got the kill. Oh, no. Nope. Nope. There. There, there you go. <laughs> Nuclear bomb inside of a crowded building. <laughs> Nuclear Molotov cocktail, right? God. <laughs> that I made that at the, uh, at the workbench. Oh, okay. Like, uh, as part of the uh, alchemy mod, right? Yep, yep. Yeah. I only had two of them, though. Pretty costly to make, I suppose. Yeah. Okay, well, looks like I shut down that gun to see that. Right? Got the, the diamond over top of it. Yep. You went and got that concrete block. Yeah. You can see where you got it. Yeah. Well, that's one drawback to firing slugs, right? Is that... Uh, if you're firing buckshot, then uh, you're probably going to hit your target at least a little bit. Whereas with, uh, with slugs... If you miss, you miss. If, if you miss, you miss. Okay, well... Yeah, I'll just leave that there. Let's see if there's anybody else to shoot in here. So anyway, this thing even has its own custom sounds and everything, right? Nice. Like it's pretty it's a pretty nice gun. I like it. Hey, Is that guy, guy still alive? Yeah. What the hell happened to him? I don't know. Weird. And now he's not lootable either. No, he's not lootable. Well, I guess he's bugged a little bit. Yeah, I'll say. He spawned in wrong. I guess he did. Okay. All right, here we go. We'll do a quick save just in case it crashes when we go through the door here. Just oh, because of the weird screwed up uh, raider outside? I think it's a good policy before you go through a, like a, a loading cell portal to save the game anyway. Yep. 
just because quite often what I found with these games is if you're going, even with a stable game, if you're going to have a crash more often than not, it happens now, right? Yeah. Yeah, that's true of a lot of games, I think. It was certainly true of Fallout 4 as well. So we'll see if we can sneak up stealthily and uh, shotgun these guys to death, eh? They're still dead from the last time I was here. Hmm. Although it looks like all the cans and stuff have respawned. Right? And that, uh... Yeah, these guys were here from the last time I was here. Pool cues and all the other good shit that they carry. Yeah, I don't think I'm going to need to go all the way through this place. I think I can probably... Uh, so long as I don't get hung up on the evil chair there. I think I have the um, um, hacking skill to just hack this terminal, open the door, and then we can just make our getaway here. And no getting hung up on the evil chair. Yeah. Yes. Because I've, I've already been through here. It's been a while, right? all this stuff here. Uh, I don't really need to loot all that stuff. Yes. I've got so much of this sort of thing already. I'll never use it all up anyway. Okay. <clears throat> You're going to help me now, right? Yep. Don't worry. I'm here to rescue you. Oh my god, thank you. Let's go. Okay, let's go. Easy rescue. Yeah. Well, I mean, I could have gone through and explored the whole area and all that kind of stuff. We'll pause while we go back outside. Okay. And we're back. Yeah. Okay, here we go. Oh, I'll grab that alarm clock, though, because it's got good stuff. And we should be able to head on back to the settlement. All the grain stuff and whatnot. Oh yeah, I'm going to have to go around again because there is only one gate. You might want to think about putting a second gate in. Oh, I did. I just forgot. It's on the other side, though. I was uh. actually fairly close to it, but I, I usually only put one opening in here. But when I first built the fence around this place, and then I think I did, in fact, hire a... Uh, um, I didn't really put a gate in, I just left an open space in the fence because this seemed to be the direction that the provisioner wanted to go. The provisioner basically walked right up to the fence and was like doing the same thing that Connie Abernathy was doing oh, over there. Okay. So I figured, okay, well I'll take that little piece of fence out. And uh, sure enough, that was a uh, the right thing to do. Then the provisioner was happy. Then the provisioner was able to leave, yeah. <laughs> okay, well... So we picked up a few more uh, weapon-type items here that we can hand out to uh, settlers. Oh, oh, what's going on here? Now somebody is attacking. Yep. Oh, rust devils. Who else? Anybody else? No? Sneak? There's still somebody around. I wonder if it's one of those robots. Oh yeah, there it is. Where are you going? <laughs> oh, you know what? He, maybe he can't figure out how to uh, get into the settlement. Yeah, well that's why you build fences around settlements though. Oh, 
Somebody. One, one figured out. No, he just come up and attacked me while I was standing in the guard post there. That one's just hiding behind the hill. Yep. Okay, well, let me go get him. Because they can't really hurt me much anyway. These guys all have shotguns, of course. Hmm. Even the robots have shotgun shells. So what do you think of the riot shotgun? It seems to be a pretty decent weapon. Yeah, it's quite effective, isn't it? Well, and I know how much you like your shotguns, too. Yeah. Well, as soon as I saw that, I figured, yeah. rather full list of everything here. Yeah, you've got all kinds of crap in your inventory these days. Well, it's one of the consequences of having a high-level character that can carry a lot of stuff, too, right? Yep. You have a tendency to carry a lot of stuff. Including 15 joints. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Guess I don't really need those anymore, either. Uh, <laughs> what else have we got in here? Uh, okay. So I just need to hand out some of these uh, improved weapons to some of these settlers now. That was what I was in the middle of doing when, uh... Okay, where'd our guard go? There's only three guard posts. <sighs> Everybody just wanders around all over the place here. Well, you did have an, your rescued settler walk right in. Yeah. Okay, never mind. I'm fairly sure. Oh, there he is. I don't know how to thank you for that rescue you pulled off. Yeah. Okay. You're welcome. It's good to know we can count on the Minutemen when we. That's what I do. I rescue yeah! hapless settlers. Let's okay. trade some things. Go ahead. Yeah, you can uh, be a better. You'll be a better guard if you're not using a pipe pistol. Okay, we'll give you a lever action shotgun. See, that's what they needed. Gatling missile launcher. <laughs> that's sort of like what that rocket's red glare thing from uh, Fallout New Vegas is, right? Yeah, kind of. Okay, well, I think I've done all that I can do with these guys right now. It shows there being three settlers here. We've got a guard and a farmer. And the other one that seems to be missing right now, I think, is actually the uh, provisioner. So, we'll uh, head over to... Um, from here, we'll head on down to Red Rock at Fort Hagen, where we've got a few people. All right. Because I don't think I've sent a... Uh, so we'll have three provisioner lines going to... Um, Nuka World. Nuka World. Uh, 
And of course, it's pretty easy to get to Fort Hagen from here. It's actually not very far away at all. I can almost see it from here. See, that's how you should flower pick in Skyrim. Why can't you do that in Skyrim? Because there's a lot more flowers to pick in Skyrim. <laughs> oh, now I've got some frame rate things going on here. Like, just the sheer volume makes it difficult to pick flowers in Skyrim just because there's so damn many. You just gotta be, like, swerving left and right, swerving <laughs> left and right. Just never let go of the forward part on that stick. Yeah. Oh, but now you're gonna get trapped gotta, by the evil log. Yeah, I've gotta jump over that log. And then I have to uh, make my way around to the gate. So here is... Oh, Ten Pines Bluff is under attack. And uh, it looks, sounds like these guys are too. Anyway, there's the gate. Oh, okay, it's just a... That's, that's actually a uh, encounter hotspot over there. Where okay. all that's going on. Yep. Anyways, here is the Red Rocket Fort Hagen uh, settlement. Hey. hey, I'm new here. Did you have anything you wanted me to do? Well, let's just trade some trade items. Yeah, I just want to trade a few things. You got a nice looking gun there. Actually, uh, you know what? I'm going to give you this because that's kind of a not a terribly useful weapon anyway. Got standard magazine, which I think holds uh, 12 shots or something. 16 shots, maybe. I've got lots of 45s, so. There. So, anyway, I used large uh, uh, junk fence pieces to build a nice tall wall here. Just because, uh, you know, like right next door is Fort Hagen, which if we were earlier in the game would still have uh, its own defenses and things set up there. Yep. And uh, uh, also this this uh, staircase will double as a way to get up onto the roof of the red rocket here. I've already laid down the floor to build another building up here. Right? Nice. And... I really like this red rocket because you have this ruined building here. And with this ruined building, you'll see that I managed to repair a whole bunch of it. Yeah, you did a really good job too. Yeah. And uh, so even in here, well, there's a little bit of an open space there because I don't have a wall piece that fits there. Yeah. I was able to put a uh, triangular shaped floor piece in there but there isn't really, a, even in the concrete set, I can't get a wall piece that will snap to this long edge on this. Mm -hmm. Like, apparently, it looks like there's no snap points on the long edge of these triangle pieces, only on the short edges, right? So in here is another little small room. And, of course, over here and down here and down these stairs, we head into the lower area, right? And I fixed up these walls in here. I'm actually out of the um, build area when I'm over in this corner because, oh, okay. because I have the ability to place you know to build things outside of the edges of the build area I was able to put these walls and these four pieces in in this corner right and just make these repairs anyways yeah and then I kind of cleared as much of this stuff out as I could and I figured this is a good area to put water pumps and, of course, I have the power coming in through one of these old windows here, right? Yep. And lots of... Uh, TPS lev reports. Lev levitating TPS reports, yeah. So, anyway, haven't really done a lot with this settlement yet, except for, uh, you know, like the building stuff, right? Yep. And putting in a whole bunch of beds on this floor and down on the lower floor, I can put more beds as well. And up here, I've got a nice open spot that I can put gun turrets and guards and things like that. And then up here is the roof where I put all of my power generation. 
and more environmentally friendly windmills. Hmm. And of course, uh, as you said, you're going to have to edit some of the things that I said earlier so we don't get in trouble. Hey, you know what? It just is what it is. <laughs> I'm a big free speech guy. I love free speech. I don't have a problem with what you say. Yeah. It's just YouTube has a well, problem. Well, what can I say? I was born in the early 1960s and grew up in a time when, uh, you know, people didn't really have the kinds of uh, um, sticks up their asses that they have now. Yeah, pretty much. <clears throat> anyway, do I have any more uh, guns and things that I can give away here? I've got a short assault rifle. I need to find some ammunition for this short assault rifle. I think I've got some in here, yep. And we've got uh, four settlers here, so I think what I'm going to do, this one appears to have self-assigned as a guard, so I'm going to make a uh, provisioner's uniform for this one. Yes, they're a very well-functioning guard, too. You can see them drawing their weapon over and over. Actually, that uh, is a factor of the uh, guard posts for the tall junk fences, I think. Oh, you figure so? Yeah, I noticed that you, you get that behavior to anybody who's assigned to one of those. It's kind of weird. I don't know why they do that, but they do that. It's not that there's anything wrong with that settler. It's just the way that they appear to be interacting with this card post. Right? It's just that it just works. Just looking to trade a little. Sure thing. Okay, so we'll give you the assault rifle and the 5.56 ammunition. <clears throat> and uh there and then you damn it okay. this bug again yeah okay you can be a supply line person to nuka world red rocket then we'll have to figure out where we had those uh gun turret set up and put them back don't you hate that bug actually it's it's really weird but i think a lot of times it happens because uh you can actually upgrade them like if we look at this one here now it says uh now it's a mark three right was it a Mark II before? I think it was a Mark I. I think there's only one, three, five. I'm not sure if there's anything higher than that. Uh, seven as well, I think. Yeah. I think that uh, the higher level ones, some of them, like, can fire explosive rounds and that kind of thing too, right? Is it an upgrade thing? Because I, I know we also had a viewer who uh, helpfully instructed us that uh, settlement distance away from Sanctuary had something to do with it too. Yeah. But I noticed, though, that, that uh, you'll get stuck on that particular thing, it seems like, when it wants you to replace those, right? Uh, At least that's my theory, anyway. Okay, so we still have those ones up there. We can have a quick look at those ones and see what uh, level they are. Nope, that one's Mark III as well. Well, maybe it is just a bug, right? Ah, well. Nothing you can do about it. Yeah. It's annoying, but, I mean, what can you do? Okay, so, uh, what do we have here for... I already built my computer for this settlement. We have two unemployed settlers. So we've got one farmer and one caravanner right now. Oh, and you've already got an assault rifle. Can we trade a few things? Of course. Sounds okay. like a candidate for a guard. 
Maybe, unless this one's already got a job. Nope. Unassigned. Okay. Well, what I thought I would do, though, is... I would uh, kind of solidify the... Uh, um, provisioner lines in this area, too, right? Okay. I just need to trade gear with you. Okay. So, so where are you going to se uh, send this one? Up to the co-op? Yeah, I thought I'd send this one up to the co-op. So... There. So now if we look at our map, there, see we've got connectors there. Yep. And uh, we could also eventually when we get... Another okay, settler. Well, we got another settler at Abernathy Farm, so we could go back to Abernathy Farm now and get another one to connect to here too, right? Yep. And then eventually, if we have enough settlers, we connect one to Overland Station as well. But... Uh, in the meantime, though, um, this that kind of stuff can all be done off camera. We've got a fair amount of beds here. We think we still got one unemployed settler, and uh, we should probably put in a little bit more uh, farming type stuff here. Doesn't hurt to have. Okay, we're growing carrots there already. Let's grow some potatoes as well. It's two, three, four, five, six. Okay. So there's quite a lot of farming area. Oh, this is convenient. There's quite a lot of farming area here too, right? Yep. Like, far more than I'll ever need, because if I turned this entire area into one big garden, I'd probably be able to produce, you know, like, more food than I'll ever need for the number of settlers. Yeah, you could produce food for the entire commonwealth. Yeah. Especially at the co-op, holy crap. Yeah. So anyway, I guess we'll, uh, we're not sleeping though, right? It's, a, it's the 12th now. So it's been what almost twenty four hours since I uh, last went to went to sleep. Oh, uh, it's maybe been like eighteen hours. Yeah. Well, I guess it's anyway. Um. So we're not going to do that. We're going to see how long we can go without sleep before the little thing comes up. Yep. Okay. So, uh, what are we looking at for time here anyway? We are an hour and eight minutes. Okay. Well, maybe what we'll do is we'll head back to Nuka World then so that we can be, uh, although if I have to come back here off camera and do a bunch of stuff again anyways, maybe we might as well head back to uh, Abernathy Farm and uh, get another, another provisioner going here. All right. <clears throat> but I'm going to have to eat something first. Uh, maybe some tasty iguana on a stick. There. So anyway, yeah, I've got another gate right here. So you and just need a couple more gates at the co-op. Yeah, everything seems to have uh, quietened down over here now. So whatever was going on here, probably... Uh, Provisioners took care of it? Well, or whoever it was that was shooting it out with each other, raiders and somebody. Right? There's another raider. <clears throat> we'll grab that short combat rifle because when we uh, make another provisioner coming out this way, well, they're going to need a better weapon. Oh, it was raiders and minutemen. Well, now we can see why the raiders lost. Yeah. Yeah, because the Minutemen now are uh, pretty well equipped. They've got combat armor and 
combat rifles and all kinds of good stuff, right? Yep. Yeah. Do I think that one on the left has combat armor on her? Yeah. Yeah. See? She's dressed in combat armor. Got a lever action, action. lever action gun of some sort. That guy's got uh, steel armor on, right? Yep. So yeah, the Minutemen are are uh, well equipped now. They are a major military force. Okay. Well, we could try and go and defend Ten Pines Bluff, right? Maybe. If you want to. Okay. Well, we'll go see if we can make it in time. See, this little trailer here, or building here, it looks like there was some place where somebody at one time was amusing themselves. Yep. Because you know what happens when you uh, knock the end off of one of these things, right? Goes flying? Yeah. Although, uh... How and where it goes is not always easily predictable, so I'm not sure that this is really a thing. Because I think that they uh, have a tendency to not really fly very in a very straight line, and some of them might even uh, flip over and kill you. Ah. Uh. <clears throat> I don't know. Bottles, pressurized bottles full of, uh, ga you know, compressed gases are actually kind of dangerous if they're mishandled. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> That they are. And that includes knocking the ends off of them and trying to shoot them more like rockets. I'm sure it'll be fine. Yeah. Hold my beer and watch this. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. See, you have so many provisioners now, the roads are always safe. Yeah, actually, that is that does appear to be a thing, actually. Um, like, a lot of the uh, encounter hotspots and stuff kind of get uh, cooled down. If you have enough provisioners on the road, they seem to keep the roads clear too, right? Well, there's no road going this way. I'm just going to go here. I think I've been through here before, too. Oh, okay. There. But as always, the point blank shooting things is still hard. Yeah, well, I only missed once, right? I killed, I got, I fired four shots, but I got three dead doggies. Yep. know how you can tell that you've become powerful enough that you don't need to be scared of anything anymore? How? You stop using the roads. <laughs> I never use the roads. Oh. oh, okay. That's over in here. It's synths. Attacking enemy. And apparently they're not very good shots either. Out of that whole thing, you still only got hit once so far. Twice. Yeah, and I only fired three shots. <laughs> Yo, know, it's because that one guy fired all of his shots into the railing there. See, the railing thing works for cover for you, too. Yeah, it's nice to know that uh, it's not just one way, right? Let's 
even that encounter hotspot is kind of cooled off now too, right? Yep. I think that uh, they might, like the a lot of the like campsites and that kind of thing, they may uh, um, re reset after a while. But once you've cleared them out enough times, you actually stop finding stuff there, right? Something. Unlike certain other places on the map. Yeah, something's glitchy there. I couldn't pick up that uh, that thing there for some reason. But you can still get those bags of cement. I could if I wanted to, but like I said, I'm to the point now where I just about don't really need to pick all that crap up anymore. <clears throat> I literally am making more money now from my settlements than I can spend. Right? Like, I tour around in the Commonwealth and I stop and I see vendors and merchants and I buy stuff and, and that kind of thing. Looks like you're going to make it on time. Yeah, it does, doesn't it? I wonder if I'll get to shoot anything or if it'll all be done by the time I... Uh, yeah, see? <laughs> All you had to do was show up. All I had to do was show up, yeah. Okay, well. Did they blow up your water pump again? Oh, probably. Yeah. Um. Not even sure wherever the water pump is. Bunch of dead robots over here. We're going to have to do that mechanist storyline one of these days, too, just so that these things will stop making a nuisance of themselves. Yep. You're getting fed up with the robots? Yeah, you'll have to see if your gun turrets on the roof are okay from that nuclear explosion. Yeah, see, they did destroy my water pump again. Well, surely they provided enough materials with them on the way to repair the water pump. Yeah, maybe I should build a fence around this place now. Right? Just to keep the riffraff out. Well, then you'd have less repairs to do, too. Yeah. Okay, well, you know what? We are where we are, and I think this is enough for this episode. Alright. So, I guess we'll leave it here off-camera. I'll try and finish up, uh, you know, some of the... What's going on over there? You hear that? Yeah, I heard explosions of some kind. Yeah. Maybe it's just there was something else playing with their not-so-mighty missile launcher. Hmm. No, there doesn't seem to be anything going on over here anyway. Hmm. Nope, don't see anything. Well... <sighs> anyway, as I was saying, I'll try and complete some of these things that are kind of loose ends here in the Commonwealth off camera. And then uh, when we come back, hopefully I'll be back in Nuka World. Sounds like a plan. So uh, until then, I'm Rec B5. And I am Sandman99. Have a good one.